welcome back to the update on the Raptor uh, build here. Um, I've improved the process that I've used to build Raptors, so I'm going to refilm this video uh, to give you an idea. <clears throat> this is a 120 watt Raptor box mod built in a 1590G box. Uh, this is my third personal box, so I've pretty much honed in the process of building it and uh, getting it to all fit in here. Uh, today, in this video, I'm going to go through a quick build on how to get all these leads onto this board and the parts that you need and get it into a package that will fit at least in uh, the 1590G box, um, or the 1590B as in boy. Um, build it slightly differently for the G box, but uh, I'm just going to go over um, what most people will be building on. <clears throat> Start off here, um, these are the basic tools you're going to need. Um, really like having these uh, little pliers around. I think I got five of them, different sizes and shapes for about um, five bucks at Harbor Freight. Uh, definitely need some wire strippers. Um, these are the minimum you'll need, and the wire trimmers, um, the vertical cutters, I think as they're called, are also pretty handy. Um, obviously you'll need a soldering iron. Um, this is a cheapo Radio Shack. Um, personally what I use is a, a Hacko, um, what is this, the fx Eight d this is a really good uh, digitally controlled um, soldering iron. I definitely prefer it. It's expensive though, but I use it every day, so it's kind of worth the price for me. <clears throat> Other things uh, you might consider if you do a lot of builds, uh, these automatic wire strippers are awesome. You'll see me using them quite a bit in this. and. I feel like it really speeds up the process, but I think they're about 20 bucks, so kind of got to decide if that's worth it for you. Uh, materials, definitely going to need some solder. Uh, this is some, what is this, 6040 resin core solder. You notice I have a few things from Radio Shack. Um, they might not be around in your area still, but uh, that's where I got my solder at least. I got this like six months ago and I still have a ton of it so that's good enough for me. Uh, you also want some uh, flux paste. Uh, this stuff from MG Chemicals is pretty good. Uh, it's also kind of expensive. This tube was 10 bucks I believe. Uh, it does last a long time. In the six months that I've been building mods I've gone through two of these tubes so actually I think it's closer to eight months now. As for wire, um, <clears throat> here's some uh, 20 gauge that I got from Radio Shack. Again, they're not around anymore, but um, I think this was 20 gauge. I never remember what size of these wires are. I got it in three colors because uh, I like to use the green for the trim wires and the black for ground and red for pretty much all the other ones. And then also you're going to want some heavier 18-gauge uh, wire. Um, this stuff I got off Amazon. I forget the exact spec on it, but it's 18-gauge. It's really nice because it's got a very high temp um, coating on it. It's not as flexible as most of the other stuff, but that's not too important. The wire on the inside is pre-tinned also, so you don't have to tin it, which is kind of cool. And got that in uh, red and black. So that's pretty much it for materials. Um, on to the parts. Um, since this is kind of a build based off of my part kits um, in the entirety. So we should go through that. Uh, this is the No Names Box Mod uh, 120 Watt Raptor part kit. Um, I'll go through that specifically here. Comes in this fancy uh, Ziploc bag with a printer label on it. And pulling it out we got the uh, 
18650 dual battery holder. And some other fun things in here. <clears throat> Start off with we have a 5.6 volt Zener diode, a 200 ohm uh, potentiometer, low profile 510 connector from Fat Daddy Vapes. Personally, I feel like these are the best uh, 510 connectors on the market. That's why I only use uh, Fat Daddy Vapes. Uh, this is a P channel MOSFET, and that's for reverse polarity protection. Uh, we got the standard anti-vandal button here, and a lot of people ask me if I have other buttons available, and I'll tell you, um, the reason I don't really use other buttons is because most of them stick really far into the box. Um, if you're building a 1590B, that's not such a huge deal, but with like the other uh, MOSFET part kits that I have and everything, um, Having the button stick out of the box a little ways is actually advantageous. Uh, otherwise, we have a 220 ohm resistor, a 4.7K resistor. Uh, <clears throat> here we have an on off on uh, switch, and that will control vo both the uh, voltmeter selection and act as a lockout switch for the box. Uh, comes with four magnets for the lid and then four of these grub screws. Um, this is actually a new addition to the kit. <clears throat> I decided uh, the little tiny magnets that I was previously offering uh, really weren't that great because you had to epoxy them in and they tended to fall out if the epoxy got warm and stuff like that. Um, I also find uh, these grub screws to be quite a bit more magnetic uh, so the lid sticks on better and it's pretty easy to adjust them <clears throat> inside the box as well. And the last part we have here are uh, two uh, 22 microfarad capacitors and then an assortment of um, heat shrink tubing that also comes with the kit. So I'll put that all away. Oh, and uh, two 9 amp uh, resettable fuses. Get all that back in there. So for the video today, um, I'm just going to run through some improvements I've made on wiring the Raptor uh, board. I have figured out a way to make it a little bit easier um, in total to do. So I thought I'd make this update video. And get all these tools out of the way here. And I will introduce El Squiddo. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this. Um, these are uh, lubrication or air tubes for like drilling. Um, they make great second hand tools. Um, you don't want to go that route. There's always like these third hand tools like this that you can get. Um, don't really like these as much because they're not as like adjustable. Um, if you're looking for um, something like this, uh, SparkFun has a great kit. I believe uh, each of these uh, tube arms is like two bucks. And uh, they have the alligator clips with like some retaining screws and all sorts of fun stuff. Um, the only other adjustment I made here or improvement is I put some heat shrink tubing around the teeth of the alligator clips so they're not quite as vicious on the uh, boards that it holds. So that's all of that. <clears throat> Get started here. Um, put down a piece of paper so you can kind of see what I'm doing. First step in... so this is the Raptor board. That was the other thing that comes in the part kit. Um, I believe when I edit the video, there's going to be a diagram right about there, I think. And I'll show you the, uh, basically the wiring that I'm going to be doing on it in that diagram right there. Um, so this is the 20 amp Raptor board. And just to make it a little bit slimmer, we're going to trim some of these tabs off and, uh, just make it so it fits in the, <coughs> everything better. <laughs> 
Uh, so here's where these vertical trimmers come in. Um, and just start clipping off these tabs here. This is more important in the G-Box build because uh, all these millimeters count. <laughs> um, if you built a G-Box, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Uh, this one I cut right here. This is the ground post. So we're going to trim that down considerably. And there we go. Uh, this one is the trim minus, and that's not that important. Uh, one of the improvements I've made is I no longer use these sense pins. Um, after talking to a lot of people online, um, basically the length of the wire in the Raptor boards is uh, so short that it hardly even matters um, to adjust the voltage. So we're going to skip that because it makes wiring ex extra complicated. And then uh, this third pin in, or fourth pin rather, this one right here. Uh, we're going to clip off because we don't need it. That's the power good pin and it doesn't get used in this design at all so we can just ignore it. So I'm going to clamp that in there and part of that heat shrink tubing is to protect the bottom of this board so it doesn't cut up the traces. Um, I think the uh, camera can see that pretty well. Uh, for this video, we're only going to be working with three other parts. The uh, 5.6 Zener diode, the 22 microfarad capacitors, and the 4.7K resistor. So let's go through mounting those. First we're going to start off with the 5.6 volt uh, Zener diode, and you notice that these uh, both has this black stripe here on this end, and it also has the red tab and the white tab. Uh, this denotes the direction that the power is able to flow. And uh, for the purposes of this design, we want the red tab going out of the board and the white tab getting connected to uh, the pin here. So that's going to be... There's my pokey stick. That's going to be on this fifth pin right here. And again, that'll be in the diagram right up in that corner. So to make this fit in here nice, um, I run it out the bottom here, and that requires a little bit of a bend. So I just kind of bend it like that, and right back. There we go. Uh, now I always forget to mention these other tools that I use. Um, this is just a simple clamp, um, spring-loaded and all that jazz. And this is a reamer tool. Um, you use it for removing pins and stuff, uh, desoldering components. But it's also great for dabbing on a little bit of flux. Uh, you could easily use a toothpick or anything for this, though. So we dab on a little bit of flux, and we clamp this in place. It's going to end up right about there. Now, let's see here. Get that centered a little bit better. Dab on a little bit of solder and solder that in there. Alright. For those of you with a digital soldering iron, I have mine set at 650 right now. Seems to be a good temperature and we don't risk uh, damaging the board with it. Next, uh, going to flip it over here and I'm going to trim off the excess and we're going to mount the 4.7K resistor. And to do this, I flipped it over for a reason, obviously. Uh, I take the resistor and I make a right angle bend and lead. So it looks like that. And then dab a little bit of flux on it. Right there at that bend. And just tilt that up so you can see it a little better. There we go. And we're going to solder that right onto 
the same pin that the diode was on. And uh, to note, I should have left the clamp on there. So otherwise the diode will fall off if it gets too warm. I'm just going to solder on the 4.7K ohm resistor. And I swear every time I do this on video, it doesn't stick the first three times. So I'll be pretty impressed if I can get this. Alright, that looks good. So I'm going to turn that back over, take off the clamp, and trim off that extra lead. The other end uh, we're going to leave uh, hanging off end of nowhere until pretty much the last step. Next I'm going to trim off this red, red tab side of the diode, and we're going to connect some red wire to that to extend it as a lead. Here's where you get to see these in action. And they work just that good. Now I'll tin up these uh, wires. If you're not familiar with tinning, it's just putting a little bit of flux on the copper and then applying a little bit of solder. Uh, this just makes it a little bit easier to kind of patch wires together. And I'll trim off a little bit of that stuff. To have a little bit more flux on and tack this on. Alright, there we go. And then we're going to apply a little bit of heat shrink tubing to that wire. Um, now, here uh, there's another tool I forgot to mention, which is a heat gun. If you have one, that's great. Um, additionally, I wouldn't really suggest using a lighter for this. Um, it just seems like a bad idea. But you could also use a hair dryer on high. Thus the magic of heat shrink. Next up, we are going to solder some leads onto uh, these two little capacitors. Uh, these capacitors are actually for surface mount, um, which means uh, in this kind of format, we'd have a little bit of trouble using them normally. But um, there's a little trick we can use. So I'm going to take these out of their packaging. What's cool is these come in a giant reel. That actually get fed into a machine and uh, it peels back that plastic covering and then picks them out and puts them on circuit boards but we're not doing that. Um, instead what we're going to do is temporarily solder them together. So I've lined them up so the solder contacts are matched up like that. And we'll take a little bit of flux and dab it on there. So this is just to get them to stick together so we can solder the leads on. So I'm just going to touch that on there, get a good covering. Then uh, we need to pair some shorter leads. And that will just be some of this green wire since we have extra. And just tin these up. These leads only need to be about an inch long because we're going to end up cutting off most of them. So we'll just make two of those. So 
I've had questions about the uh, Raptor Park kit and the pre-wire deal. Um, <clears throat> if you're watching this and thinking about building one, and don't feel comfortable doing this, uh, my website, we offer <coughs> um, a pre-wired package, which is basically going to be exactly what you see in this video. Um, I've had other people ask if it comes fully assembled, and no, sadly it does not. Um, you would like to understand why you can watch the other four hours of these videos. So what I'm going to do here is solder this onto the other side, not the already soldered side of the capacitors. And it's an okay solder. Touch that up, and add a little bit more flux on. And now we'll get the other side. If it'll hold still. Okay, and that creates a nice little package um, with two leads coming off of it, which will make it significantly easier for us to attach to the board. And I don't really like that gap right there. Um, so I'm going to quickly fix that. Okay, now let's trim off that excess. There we go. Now to insulate that a little bit, uh, there's this uh, thicker 5 millimeter um, heat shrink tubing in the part kit. And we'll just kind of encapsulate that. Just make sure it doesn't contact anything when we put it on the board. And just to make sure, I like to crimp this end of it, like that, and we just trim that off. Alright, so next up, get this back over here. There we go. Uh, first thing we're going to do is bend one of these off to a right angle. And this is going to be attached to this uh, third pin right here. Uh, this is also ground, but uh, we just need to kind of measure out here how it's going to end up. And I usually um, just use like forceps or something to grab it right where that pin is and twist it around a little bit. <clears throat> and then, so I got my mark here. I'm just going to go out about. I don't know, five millimeters or so, and clip it off. This is where the other wire strippers come in. Um, pull that off, and we'll tin that up. Ta da! And that leaves the other one. So the other lead here, which will be in this diagram up there. Uh, gets attached to this pin right here next to the diode and we just got to bend that over a little bit like that make sure this end's still lined up where you think it's going to be and mark it so you can see this ends up being pretty short I've made dozens of these now and I still always cut them too long I suppose that's better than too short. There we go. Tin that up. Okay. 
Next, I take these leads and I kind of bend them to be in line with the pins. So it's going to be a right angle there. And I just kind of move this one over so it's about like that. And that usually works about perfect. Here's where this clamp comes in again. So I just kind of line this up and clamp it into place. I use the forceps to kind of get them to get next to the pins they're supposed to be connected to. And we dab on a bit of solder. Or solder flux, that is. Then we dab on a little bit of solder. And ta da! Alright, next up, uh, this starts to move a little bit quicker. Uh, we're going to use some of the 18 gauge wire. And I've got some pre measured marks that I do. But as long as you make them significantly long, just cut out some of this wire here. Alright, so this stuff, I really like the quality of this wire. Um, like I mentioned before, it's pre tinned actually make this part really easy. Um, I just take the wire there and bend it so it's at a right angle and dip in a little bit of flux. And this is the V outline so that's going to go on this first pin here. You can kind of see why I cut off that tab. Um, a lot of the wires run out that channel there, so that's kind of helpful. And since uh, I'm wiring this up for somebody for a Raptor kit build, uh, I put two wires on V out and V in. I'm take that off. Um, this thicker 18 gauge wire on V out goes to the 510 connector, and the smaller one that I'm about to attach uh, goes to the switch. Um, the lockout switch slash voltmeter switch. And that's so the voltmeter can read uh, either the V out or V in. And just like that. Put a little bend in this to make it easy. Dip in some flux. And the trick here is soldering one wire to the other one, not letting the other one fall off. So. Kind of line them up there and hold the one steady. And that looks good. Next up is going to be the trim positive, which is this uh, second pin right here. Just for the clarity of uh, future wiring, I always make these green. Which I might have to change because I'm running out of that green wire. Uh, just kind of measure that. And like all the ones that connect to pins, I bend it. Dab on some flux. Solder it in place. Oops. I'm supposed to let it solidify first. There we go. And these kind of just keep piling out the side here. Next up is VN. And going to be a thick 18 gauge and a thinner 20 or 22 gauge. Didn't quite take off enough for my taste. Again, uh, pre tin so we don't have to do that. Dab on some flux 
and I just kind of lay it on there like that. So it's going to be, um, if we hadn't clipped that one off, that would be the sixth pin, but it's the fifth visible one right here. And we're just going to solder that on kind of at an angle. Say that's close enough for government work. Next up is the 20 or 22 gauge wire. It's going to go on the same exact spot. I think the video is going to cut out here, so I'm going to prematurely stop it and start it again. Okay, back. That pinned up. Bend it. Weep it. And I'm just going to lay that right in there with that one. I don't have to worry about it getting clipped off later. And, of course, the other one comes loose. And kind of tighten that up a little. Okay, guess we have to redo all of that. <laughs> Put a little bit more flux on there to make that a little easier. Uh, there is a proverbial buttload of solder on there. Which isn't a huge deal, but it doesn't always look that great. That will work. All right, next up, um, the other trim wire, and that's the negative trim, goes on this post here. Usually just kind of like tilt that like that. So we need about a long. And of course I managed to drop it on the ground. And I'll just get soldered on the end here. Transfer that over. Now we're going to be working on this uh, negative post with that resistor there. And what we're going to do is that 4.7K resistor that we put on there earlier and just kind of left hanging. We're going to put some heat shrink tubing around that to isolate it from those other pins. chill out for a second. <clears throat> Next up, rotate that a little bit. Dab some flux right onto this uh, ground tab here. And we'll almost be done wiring this. So I like to tuck that in there and try to get this lead to 
come right across this tab here. Nice gob of solder on. And just let the flux pull it in. Clip off the remainder of that resistor. And the last step in soldering uh, this part, anyways, is attaching ground wire. And again, that's just going to be some of this uh, 18 gauge, but in black this time. And all I got to do is dip that in some flux. And get a nice healthy bit of solder on. And tack that down. And as we can see, I did a really bad job. <laughs> kind of press that down a little bit more. I managed to make that look even worse. Um, <laughs> I swear, I make dozens of these like a week, and whenever I sit down to make a video, it's like my absolute worst work. There. I'm going to conclude that is good enough for government work. And that's kind of what we got here. So. Mostly the only thing left to do is kind of like line up these wires a little, kind of get them nice and packed in there. Um, going to bend this one. Remember that's that diode lead in there, so that one's kind of stiff. And we're just going to wrap it around there. Ground is going to get bent that way. Trim minus, brought back. And just kind of get all these in line. And then to make sure nothing sharp pokes through, um, just going to do a little trim up on these leads. Don't want to clip off too much here, um, especially if you don't like uh, solder the entire length of the pins by mistake. It's just kind of a trim job. Get any sharp points off. Say good enough. And then there's this fancy bit of clear heat shrink tubing that comes with the kit. Note, I could have bought uh, the cheaper black stuff for the kits. Um, it is incredibly cheaper. But you can't see through it, and I don't think that's as cool. So I'm sending the clear heat shrink. I like to line this up so it just barely gets past that. Uh, negative solder point there on the board and then you just kind of want to hold these wires all together so they're a nice tight bundle and you can hit it with a heat gun and there you go um, for fun, I like to crimp the other end of it here and just to kind of seal it off. And then you can put it aside. That's all. And uh, you can pretty much follow the rest of the other videos. I just wanted to update this one. So if you'd like to purchase a uh, Raptor part kit, um, go ahead and visit us at nonameboxmods.com. And uh, we get these priced pretty fairly, I would say. Um, I the idea was uh, I went out and found the price if you went out and uh, hunted down all these parts yourself and bought them. And then I knocked uh, some money off. I think normally this kit would be about $87 if you ordered everything. Um, I have it priced at $69.99 currently. 
So I think that's a pretty fair deal. You get this and uh, you get a box, um, a 1590B uh, black box. And there's also several other options now. Um, just to kind of show them off, we have some different colored 510 connectors. So we have the stainless steel, that's the standard that comes with it. And there's also this black, um, it's an anodized black, so it's not like an enamel black. And there's also copper. Um, so those are some other options and upgrades you can get for pretty cheap. Have a nice day, and uh, enjoy.